Hello, this is Leo with Scraptastic Patchwork, and welcome to Scrap Busting 2021. Today we are covering this naked, plain, but very comfy desk stool. I have never done a slip cover before, so this could be very disastrous. I have this sheet I've been saving for quilts that I am going to use as a foundation. And then I'm going to add my patchwork basically as applique to this foundation. I think it's going to be a little bit easier for me to do this than create the patchwork first. So I'm using this awesome Kathy Holden flea market mix fabric. I have been hanging on to this for a while, but it's time that I use it for this project. I figured it was a good theme to use for a junk journal collage craft corner. I have 20 fat quarters. I think I'm only going to use 18, but there's so many great colors and fabrics and prints. First thing to do is to drape my foundation over the chair. I'm not going to pull it too taut because you want to have there be some give to it. But what I'm going to do is directly pin it to the chair since it is a postered. So it's an easy way to fit a slip cover over your chair. So I'm going to pin it directly to the back and the seat, and then I'm going to cut it. And what I've done is I've put my pins approximately where my seam will be going. So along the back and along the seat where my first seams will be because I'm going to have three pieces to this slip, slip cover. Then I'm going to cut, giving myself about a half inch seam allowance. And when I cut, I'm going to cut pretty straight down at that junction between the back and the seat. I don't want to go in too far because this is a slip cover and you need to get the whole thing over the biggest areas. So you don't really want to bottleneck yourself with your seams. So this is what it looks like after I have cut it. The back is pretty much the same. You're going to place your pins in the same place as the front where your seam will be. You also want to make a little mark in the center top of both pieces, both your front piece and your back piece so that you can measure those or match those up when you're going to seam it later on. So the only difference with the back is that you're going to be leaving the length and you want to measure that. You want to include a hem and I'm going to include about a half inch for my hem, but you take that measurement from the top to the bottom. You also are going to do a measurement from that top center down to your seat. And you want to take a measurement of the whole seat front. I better start writing these measurements down before I forget. Number one, the top back measurement from the center to the full length that I want. Number two, from top center to the seat, which is where I will stop my seam on both sides. Number three, 
the length of the seat front, which is how long my skirt will need to be. And then number four is that seam stopping place to the bottom of the cover. We can measure that later. So let's start playing with fabric. I am going to rough cut approximately nine inches on every single one of these fabrics. I know that I wanna have a few different sizes and shapes, but I don't wanna go any bigger than that. So nine inches I thought was a pretty good measurement. So I now have 18, approximately nine by nine inch squares. So my three different sizes, I think I'm gonna do two squares and one rectangle. My first two squares are eight by eight, and then five by five, and my rectangle is eight by six. I think that'll give me a good variety. I don't want raw edges on these patches, so I'm going to be sewing them all to fusible interfacing, the glue side to the right side of my fabrics. Now I cut my corners and I also make a little cut in the center of the interfacing and that allows me to turn it right side out. You want to do this kind of carefully, poking out your corners carefully because the, the weight of your interfacing might be too thin and you may poke some holes, but if that happens, it's not the end of the world. So now after turning them right side out, your interfacing fusible side is out as well. So to help you affix to your foundation. But first I need to decide on my layout. The only real thing that I need to worry about is for my seat portion, I don't wanna do too many because that will get the most wear and tear and rubbing. So I'm just gonna do a few patches and pin them down to my seat and seat back. But for the actual back of the slip cover, I can go a little bit more, have a little bit more fun with, with my patches here. And of course, this process takes a while. The creativity must be allowed. And now it's time to fuse those patches down with the iron. I decided to zigzag all my edges on the back piece, but on the seat portion, I quilted it because I thought it needed a bit more stitching to make sure those are secure. I did a variety of different quilting stitches.
There was one more piece I needed to add to this collage of patches, and that is my label. So I also added that one in. Lola is my nickname. Now it's time to sew both of these pieces together. You want to match up where you marked your center top of both pieces. And that's where I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to start in the middle and work towards my side. And I'm going to go back to the middle and work towards the other side. Remember to measure that top to your stopping point on your seam where the cover is just barely going to be hitting the top of your seat. And be sure to backstitch there. So this is how it's looking so far. I think it's uh, turning out okay. Now you're going to have to measure from that intersection on each side to the bottom hem of the back. So you want to add a total inch for seam allowance and for hem. And so my measurement is 12. I'm going to add one inch, so 13. So my total skirt length and width is 13 by 45. That's the skirt I now need to make. And I've decided to do patchwork instead of uh, applique. However, I'm gonna do a gathered skirt. So I need to add 20 inches to that length. So I'm going to settle at about 65 inches and that's gonna give me enough width to gather as well. There are other ways to do a skirt, but I decided this was the easiest way to do it. I cut 12 pieces at 13 by six and sewed them together. And then I cranked my stitch length as high as it would go and did a gather stitch, no back stitch, so I could pull one of my threads and gather that up to about 45 inches. I decided to sew the ends first to each side and then line up the center of the gathered skirt and the center of the seat, starting my sewing again at the center and working out to the sides so it doesn't shift. I know that there are other ways to do this, but I find this to be the most forgiving when I sew skirts or dresses. So I thought I would do it here because I'm creating a dress from my chair.
that's done and it looks super cute. I just need to press it and maybe add a little stretchy vintage lace to cover any not so perfect gathers and to trim it out. I zigzagged the lace and now there's only one last thing to do and that's hem it. Ta-da! I think it turned out really cute. I made little bows with some of the vintage lace on either side and added some buttons. I think it helps bring it in a little bit and it also covers a few of those little puckers that I had in there. I really believe that this is the finishing touch to this craft corner that I needed. gives you some ideas maybe inspire you to cover some of your tired looking desk or office chairs as always thanks so much for joining me for this scrap busting project I will have another one coming up next week Please check my links below. I will have the next sewing room reorg project in a few days. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.